of the place that God has sent on a mission I thwart every satanic plan, every occultic plan, every marine kingdom, every altar of darkness, every foundational altar. Spiritual caging is something that is very silent in the church, but it's a reality that lives with you and I in our journey and walk with God. There is a season in a man's life that the enemy play a smart game or tricks on us. Most time because we are not in the knowing, we can't even identify or even perceive that we are under severe attack. But spiritual caging is a reality. It is happening. It happened the scripture and it is still happening until now and going forward until you are revealed unto. You might not even know that the source of your problem and calamity, it is just because there is a caging in the spirit. Spiritual caging, let me ask, cage, we all know cage means something that puts you in a place where you can't access freedom. When we say cage, cage is a confinement, a place where it is caged. Only you or few of you might be there, but you don't have access to do what you want, how you want it, and when you want it. When you are caged, you might see storms rising and going down. Does not mean you will come out to experience it. You can only sight it without being experienced to it. Many of us today are spiritually caged. That is why our life has been like someone who is not in existence on the planet Earth. When you are caged, things go wrong. When you are caged, your life meets things that are unhealthy to the living of men. What is spiritual caging? Spiritual caging is when your spirit man is captured in a spirit war or realms by demonic agents. Spiritual caging is when your spirit man is captured in a spiritual war or realm by demonic agents. When your spirit man, who God has assigned you to this act to work with you, is captured in a certain realm of the wicked. When they have summoned your soul out of your body, unknown to you, you are a living but you are not present in your body. When you have been captured by a certain kind of demonic spirit or agent assigned to carry out such wickedness in your life, that is what we call spiritual caging. It reflects in your spirit man and you are captured in the realm of the invisible. In the realm of the invisible, your spirit can be trapped in the world that you ought not to be. But fortunately, you'll be there without even knowing that you are there. Let's look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 verse 15 to 23. I read. For what? For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Lord that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, in bracket, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I feel. Find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. Is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. This is an apostle of God. In lamentation of experience, he had encountered. This is not an ordinary Christian who just knew God the other day. Paul 
was a man with wisdom in the things of God. But a time in his life, this caging spirit caught up with him. He was held in captive by an invisible entity that he recognized that this thing is not me that is doing it. I have realized that there is something in my body. There is something worrying with my innermost being. There is something that is wrong somewhere. Even if I cannot place my hand on it, I don't understand it. But there are evidence that the things that I want to do, I do not. And the things I don't want to do is the things I see myself doing. And one thing I know as Paul, I know I love the law of God, which bringeth peace. But I don't know why I am so stubborn to do the things I ought not to do. This is trying to understand. Why is this thing happening to me? Why am I battling with this present situation in my life? Children of God, there is a spirit that comes into your life and suspend your own affairs. There is a spirit that can find entrance in your body and suspend the things, things you wish to do that you know they are good for you. That is what we call caging spirit. They keep you out of your own agenda. You begin to do their own biddings. You want to serve God, but they will not allow you because they have captured you. The moment they capture your inner man, the moment they capture your personality, the moment they have access into your life, they will make sure that every good value you hold valuable, you will no longer have the strength to keep it. You will no longer be able to resist the appetite of sin. You will no longer be able to live a righteous life. You will no longer be able to have a transaction with the things of God. The same Paul cried out and said, there is a thorn in my flesh. A thorn in my flesh. A thorn is something you have battled with. You don't, you know the implication, but yet you don't have ability to destroy the force behind the thorns. Many Christians are under spiritual cage. We are being held hostage in the realm of the spirits. We are being kidnapped by spiritual assassinators. We are being kidnapped by intelligent demons. We are being held hostage because we are afraid to look beyond the scripture and look above in the spirit. We fear spirituality. I pray anyone under the sound of my voice that has been caged by spirit assassin, may you be released. May your soul come out. And the scripture say, my soul has escaped like a bird from the snail of the fowlers. The snail is broken and my soul has escaped. Before that verse, he said, if the Lord has not been on our side, our enemy would have swallowed us up quickly. If the Lord was not with us, the waters would have covered us over. But thanks be to God, who has not given us as a prey to the teeth of the wicked, who have not allowed our enemies to rejoice over our destiny. He said, the soul shall escape. Your soul escape when there is a trap, when there is a cage, when you have been caged. The only way to come out of the cage is to escape from the cage. When you are dealing with cage issue, you don't pray prayer of gentility. You pray prayer of force. Since the time of the John the Baptist time, the heavens suffered violence. And only the violence shall take it by force. When your spirit is caged, a lot of evil will befall you. When your spirit is caged, your destiny is mortgaged. When your spirit is caged, the enemy will begin to use your spirit to begin to function. Look at the life of Samson. When they capture Samson and cage him, what Samson would have been doing with his destiny was averted into slavery. He became a slave to the people he was supposed to destroy because they took away his power and caged him. Even when he was caged, eyes removed, they used him to achieve their own beatings. His life stopped from the time he was caged. May God deliver you from any form of cage in the name of Jesus. 
May the Lord deliver you. How to know you are spiritually caged? How can you perceive? How can you detect that you have been under a cage by this intelligent spirits? Number one, you start struggling with prayers. The moment this intelligent spirit attacks you and cages you, you will lose your strength to pray. You will no longer have the strength. You will no longer have the appetite. You will no longer have the stamina. You will no longer have the ability. In your mind and your mouth, you are saying, I want to pray. Pray now. No way. I know I am supposed to be praying. I know it is time for me to pray. But kneel down and pray that prayer in four seconds. You are angry with yourself that you have not prayed. And yet you are alone in the house. Yet you can kneel down to pray. You try to raise a prayer point. It's as if your tongue has been tied on top of your roof mouth. It is not ordinary. It is a caging spirit. Because if they don't stop you from praying, you will destroy the cage and you will be set free. So the first thing you will see when your spirit has been caged as a true Christian, your prayer life will wither away. You will go for prayer meeting. After that prayer meeting finish, you go home, no fire. You turn up a prayer warrior in the television, you begin to hear. After they finish, now you live in a wilderness. You cannot understand it. You cannot comprehend it. It looks like it is not happening. But you are counting days, weeks, months, years. Your prayer is snatched away from you. It is a sign that you have been spiritually caged. Because the more they cage you, that environment will no longer be conducive to raise prayers. Will no longer be conducive to make any other prayer or spiritual activities. You will lose your ground completely and hold and touch of your spirituality. Because the territory where you are caged is no longer your territory. You are efficient in your territory. When they cage you in their territory, you lose efficiency. You can't do anything. You will only abide according to their government at the time you are being caged. <coughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. How to know you are caged? Number two, you will stop seeing your dreams. They will cover your dreams. Because dream is an indicator of your spiritual state. They will cover your dream because why God allows us to dream is pass information to us. If they allow you to dream and remember your dream, you will realize that you are in danger, you will seek for help. There are dreams that troubles you that makes you not to sleep over the night. There are dreams that wake you up. Even if your prayer life was dead, you will force yourself into prayer. The enemy knows this for truth. So the moment they capture you in their territory, they cover your prayer life. They cover your dream life. So that you will not have any reason to be bothered. You will not have any reason to look for emergency. You will not have any reason to seek for help. They already know if you see it, you will fight it. So they make sure they are operating in darkness. They make sure they don't allow you to gain revelational information. They block, they block you. They make sure of it. Then you sleep these days. You wake up only in the morning to realize that it is morning. How you slept from that six to six, you cannot account for it. It has never happened to you, but it is now happening to you. That you sleep like a parallel line without stopping, without waking or moving an inch. It is not normal. It is your enemy. They are building a wall against you. And as long as they succeed, it won't do so long. You will be uprooted. This is their strategy. They have never changed until now. Set change. He have a different ways of achieving the same things. Because of time. Number three, how to know you are under spiritual cage. When you don't get favor, when favor don't come to you, you are under spiritual cage. Favor is an attraction of God's presence. When you are in demonic territory, when you have been kept in a demonic territory, even the greatest man on earth will never favor you. When you came to this church, one of the things that you encounter is the presence of God. That is why the moment you began to attend to church here, you begin to come and again and again. The next thing you begin to see, favor will begin to locate you. What happened? I prayed by the help of the Holy Spirit. The siege of your life. It's not like your prayer was not working. You have been praying. But the environment where the enemy has kept your soul cannot give room for favor. So when you enter a place that is burning, that 
environment will be peaceful and then what had small smirk will begin to come and as they keep coming if you continue staying they increase in number and in size then the devil will see that you are get faith he will start telling you don't come to church again go somewhere else be busy do this do that why he knows that the atmosphere where you have positioned your such a light we keep making favor to come to you. When you were struggling, you didn't change church. When he starts seeing small favor is when you want to change church. You don't know why. It is enemy news. They know more than you. They are intelligent information that they have that you don't. So when your life lacks favor, you are caged. Have you, who goes to favor a man? Imagine you going to the prison and say, I have bought a car for a prisoner. How will he drive it? He only needs survivor until he comes out of the prison. You cannot go and marry a wife for a prisoner. I have married a wife for you. Come and start having children. There are limitations that is with someone that is caged. And because of that limitation, favor to people around you will be favored. You only. It will look as if the angel lost your address. It is true. They don't have jurisdictions. They don't have the right to go to the territory where you have been caged, except on the case where God decides to intervene because of you. So don't think that when you get favor, it is normal, it is abnormal. Every true child of God who carries the mark of Christ, the way we know that favor lives in us is how we see the presence of God. Is that favor? If nobody is favoring you, there is a hand of the enemy in your life. It is always almost. Almost. When you are dealing with almost, almost, I almost got that job. I almost got that money. I almost got that favor. I almost, almost. Your life begins to play the role of almost. Some has caged, some has So when you look at your life and you can't find the glory of God in it, you are not in the radius. Your signal network is nowhere to be found because God will not stay. He said, I load you with daily benefit. There is daily benefit because even the prayer of Jesus said, Give us these days our daily bread. Our God is a daily provision God. He's a responsible Father who makes sure that every day you wake up, something should be on your table. So when there is nothing coming, someone is taking it behind the scene. Calibro satire. This teaching we see, we teach it and people get angry. Why? Because they are under cage. You teach it and some people we just, they don't know what happened to them. So sometimes you see some pastors or people are very careful to expose spiritual things. Because the reaction that afterwards. You can even see how the spirit and people will delete the, their phone. It, you will become angry. Why? You don't know. Because the territory that is governing your caging is already reacting through you. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number four, how to know you are under caging. When your life is not progressive, when your life is not progressive, when you are stagnated, a true child of God, the Bible said, the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. So when your life is not progressing, you are pro deprogressing somewhere. You are deteriorating somewhere. You are decaying somewhere. Let me tell you, you might not have arrived to your destination, but there should be evidence that you are walking towards it. When you lack evidence of you are walking towards it, something is wrong somewhere. You are not the only casualty on earth. There are proof that lives within us as believers that we can see the finger of God in our life. When you are not seeing it, someone somewhere, something somewhere has tempered with your spirit man. Has tempered with your spirit man. Has tempered with your spirit man. Your life must move forward. It might be a minute speed speed. It might be total speed. It might be snail speed. But the point is there should be speed in it. Whereby there is no speed at all. There is something beyond him keeping it in one place. Number five, quickly as I'm trying to make up for time. When you lack the glory of God, you lack glory. People cannot look at your life and admire it. People cannot look at your life and admire it. Your life is so twisted up that people look at you and pity you. You have become an agent of pity. Nobody sees glory in you. Even when you are dressing fine, it's not showing. You are trying to smile, it's not showing. You can't even understand yourself anymore when you lack glory. A true child of God, if you don't know, you will be there. 
People will see you and your mind will encourage someone. People will see you and they will even be thinking you have much. Have you ever lived in a place where you are financially <laughs> out of cash and yet people come and meet you for cash? That's glory. You are wearing a, a cloth that <laughs> your mother, you inherited from your mother's mother. You washed and iron it. As you are going, people are telling, Aki, this is very fine. It is glory. Because if they check in the market, that cloth does not, is nowhere to be found. It is only you that have it because it's a generational outfit. But the glory will remain in it. The glory will remain in it. When your life lacks glory, there is something wrong. Someone who is under cage. It's the past who you see. You see, David said, oh, they look at me and they are here. Have you ever read it in the Bible? Say the same thing, Psalm 35. The same people, when they were going through, I fasted them. But look at me now. They look at me and they look their head. They gnashed their teeth. They mocked me. Because the glory of God cannot be seen in me. And he said, God, do not be silent. Arise and release your power, your glory of me. Child of we are a product of glory. We are the salt of the earth, the light that shineth in darkness. We ought to carry the glory of God. When that glory is your enemy has stolen from you. Because of time, let's progress. How to overcome the caging spirit? How can you come out of the cage? How can you come out of the cage? Now that there are many things to know that you are in cage. But because of time, I took this five, five visible things that every you must experience. How to come out of cage. Number one, you need a man of God, a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist. Whosoever that God has made available, you need them to do deliverance. Why? When you are under cage, break yourself. You cannot deliver yourself already be well. You have already been captured. So you are already in the territory of your enemy. For you to bring out yourself from that territory, you need a hand. That is why anytime the children of Israelites, by mistake, whether by error or by their own default, they decide to walk into the dam of their enemy, God will send a prophet. He will send someone from somewhere to go set them free. If you cannot be caged and have the power over the one who has caged, you need an extract. That is why I laugh at some Christians who say, I can pray. I will pray myself out. You will pray for a long time. And who you know something will change. Because if you are already caged, it is not my norm for them to cage you. If they only cage, they are close to They follow. If time permits me, I can. For the enemy to cage you, they are procedures. They take the form of caging. So caging is not just as simple as the two words in the spelling. So you need a pastor, a man of who understands deliverance to do a deliverance service section or put you under deliverance to help you out that cage. Number one, how to overcome or how to come out of the cage. You have to disconnect yourself from the covenant. You must disconnect yourself from the covenant and the initiation that took place for you to be caged. You have to disconnect yourself from the covenant. Let me help you. The scripture says, can two work together except they be agreed. For any territorial spirit or environmental spirit or foundational powers, to be able to cage you, they must first of all covenant with you. They can cook food for you, you eat it, knowingly and unknowingly, they have entered the covenant through that. They can buy you gift item without your knowledge, but the moment you stretch your hand to take it, that is why the Bible said, do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Because what relationship has light and darkness? The moment you share company, you are already in it. So for you to come out of the cage, you must disconnect yourself. Through prayer, consciously disconnect yourself from the covenant that existed and initiation. If that covenant did take place, you put them in their territory. You become comfortable because they have a part of you and you have a part of them in your system. That is why we very care as children of God so that we will not be enslaved without knowing. We will not be enslaved without knowing. How to come out of the cage? Number three, destroy the deposits planted by the agent of darkness. 
destroy the deposits. They must plant something from them to weaken your spirit for them to be able to cage you. If a military personnel, they are going to fight war or they are going for a place for rescue, for them to be able, they must first of all throw tear gas. Why are they planting those tear gas? To weaken the people, to make them not to be able to have the stamina to resist being removed. And sometimes they have to plant a spar on ground days before they arrive to the operation. So if you want to really deal with the cages, spirits, there is a plant side. A network system that they have succeeded in putting. That is why many people go to witch doctors. When you go to witch doctors, they will give you mark. One, three, what are they doing? They are doing installation. installation. So that wherever you, their spiritual system can navigate. That is why they can hear so that they can see you clearly. They can hear so that they can see you clearly or be they choose sensitive places to put it because of communication purposes. Time now, but there are deposits that have been planted for the enemy to be able to carry out their assignment. They must put plantation so that when they come, they will use the plantation as an access to weaken you. Please. You won't even resist. That's because no, we didn't know when you were killed. Some of you is now that I am teaching you are knocking and say that it because they did not come and give you notice. They did not come and write a letter for you. They have been transacting with you even through your spirituality without your knowledge. That is why rescue service is very sensitive because we do exposition. As if there is any service the enemy likes to fight, he resists it because he know anytime people come here, prophetess does come and say those things that is hiding. People shall be free. Your children must be free. Your family must be free. You have dwelt for so long. It is now time for freedom. Number four, how to come out of the cage. You must arrest the agent of darkness that was assigned against you. You must arrest the agent of darkness that was assigned against you. Because for all these activities to happen, someone is in charge. That is what we call the act enemy. They are the strong man Jesus talked about. They give order. This is how it happened if I can act a small puppy by telling a story. The agent of darkness will be sent in the coven, for instance. They will ask a question. Who can be able to bring down this sister who has been praying every 12 o'clock till 1 o'clock and anytime she starts praying, all the witches in her territory are not able to come for meeting. Either they become sick or they become running stomach or they become blind or they experience a lot of inconvenience to carry out their spiritual duties against their afflictors. If any one of the demons can volunteer to carry out this assignment against this sister who is a true believer, you will be given a rank from number six to number nine. And one spirit that believed in his self and acquired experience will volunteer and say, send me Satan. I am going to be able to bring down that true believer. And Satan will say, I anoint you for the assignment. That is the agent on assignment. That agent is the one who will come to your territory. He will come and call your name. Let's assume your name is Joy. He will come and call Joy James. Where do you stay? In their sister, they will see she's staying in Kajado. Which church does she go? She's going to God's Word Embassy Church. Is the pastor our pastor or is a true pastor? Is our is not our pastor? Serious problem. So the first agenda is to remove that sister from the church. Because if the sister does not go out of the church, she will remain a burning fire that cannot be quenched. So the agent on assignment will take up a duty and go and meet the sisters or the grandmother of that sister who is a true believer. I'm acting a movie by telling it. Suddenly your grandmother will call you. Aki, where do you worship? Your grandmother who has never been to for the past 20 years has suddenly called you to tell you, I am having nightmare. Take me to your church where you worship. I want to go with you. And you think that God has given you member. Mama is called agent on assignment. And you will bring them to church. Mama will pray. They will feel strength and comfort. When they go back home, two, three weeks, they will call you that church you are going. Stop going there. The Holy Spirit laid in my heart that you should stop going there. If you continue going there, I will disfather you. I will dismother you. They will begin to attack your faith. Unknown to you, it is not there. The enemy have seen, the agent on assignment, have seen that this is the only person he can use to torment you, to remove you from that church. Because he needs you out of that church very quick so that he can fight you. You won't know. That is 
the responsibility of the agent on assignment. He will be making that woman angry and yet that who does not live with you, does not pay your bill, bill has, has no role to play in your life. But the enemy will employ them to make sure. He will tell you, can't you see the churches in this area? How do you, maybe if you are coming for far, for instance, he will tell you that place. You leave all the churches, almost 200 churches, to go to the one that is very far. You have been brainwashed. You have been hypnotized. You have, they will give you names that you don't even know where it's coming from. And they will be so serious until you are asking yourself, why have they taken it personal? You thought it was individual salvation. It is not them. The agent on assignment is working to achieve one thing, to remove you from the place. Because that place is a danger for them. As long as you are there, everything they have done since you came there did not work on you. And they are now seeing light shining upon your pathway. So they can't take it for too long. And when they mount pressure, ignorantly, because you will go and quote Bible say, obey your parents and your mother. Let me obey my parents. You walk out of the church in obedience according to the word of God. Sindio, it is not that. It is the agent on assignment. When you have left, ah, the agent on assignment will come and say, I have removed her from the territory of prayer. Now, I will weaken her prayer life. Remember when you left, you are still unstable because your mind is still feeling like, I want to be here, I don't want to be here. That kind of feeling is there. Before you know, they will employ spirits to begin to blow you breeze. When you lie down on the bed, as you have already programmed that you will pray by one, at 1, 11.30, the spirit will appear. They will begin to fight you. La, 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 until la, la, until la, la. You will begin to snore with the gears. You will begin to change it. You are changing it. When you wake up, it is 6 o'clock. You will say, ah. I was tired, that is why. Two days later, the same thing. Three days later, the same thing. Before you know, one month you have not prayed. And they will become happy. As long as you have not prayed for that one month, they will now send an agent to come to the dream, in your dream world, to make a friend with you. You will now see somebody you have not seen for a long time. It could even be from your relative who is dead. We come and give you a handshake in the dream and tell you, don't worry, everything will be well. When you wake up, you stop reading the Bible. When you wake up, you don't, you say, I will think of, let me go and have some fun. I've been so much in pressure, let me have some fun. You begin to lose touch with the power of God. You begin to lose touch with things that matters before you started that journey with unknown to you. Suddenly, the agent on assignment is announced no longer praying. Her fire is quenched. Plant a seed that wherever she is, she will only think of having a man friend, only think of going out for drinking, clubbing, associating, distancing herself from anyone who would have given her spiritual advice, making her feel like everybody wants to control her. Remember, I am telling you a story like a movie. From there, you will think you want to be alone. I need my space. I'm okay. I have to stay on my own. I don't need to associate with anybody. God bless me. Bountiful. God, Satan will help you to get that blessing for sure. So you have money to stay on your own for sure. You don't know that your salvation is already engaged. When they realize that that is done, then they will send agents to come and arrest you. You will be caged. All these things that is happening, one spirit is the one giving the order. That's what we call agent on assignment. If you pray and you don't arrest the agent on assignment, he will exploit another set of demons. But when you deal with the agent on assignment, that one will lose his ground. Let's assume you were fighting with spiritual husband. When we pray with you, pray with you for instance, and kill the agent that is bringing the spiritual husband, it will stop. Now, what have the family background going to lose another avenue? Because you have killed the agent. So if they can employ another agent, they will look for another medium, another that strategy to capture the person. That is why the Bible says we are in a warfare. We are not in a funfair. This earth is a warfare. It is those who are able to see beyond the veil that can fight and be victorious. That can fight and be victorious. So you must arrest the agent. The moment you arrest the agent, other small spirits 
that we are working for the agent, we begin to be afraid. Then we say, arrested our master. If our master is captured, they will kill us. They will run and go and look for another master to start helping that one. Because when you scatter the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Praise be to Jesus. Number four, number five, how to overcome, how to come out of the cage. Command your freedom. Command your freedom. Begin to use the word of God to decree that no one can hold you hostage. That who the son of man has set free is free indeed. That you have been delivered from the snail of the fowler. You have been delivered from powers of darkness. You have been delivered from territorial forces and environmental power. You begin to proclaim, proclaim continually your deliverance. You command it. I set myself free. I open the prison door. I lose that chain. You begin to command it. That is when the Bible says that whatever you decree on earth will be established in heaven through your commanding authority. Because at that time, the strong man has been bounded. You might not kill the strong man because most of the strong men are fallen angels. They can't die. They have already been reserved for final judgment in the lake fire. So you can't kill them. You kill demons. You don't kill strong men. You only bind strong men and keep them one place as you continue progressing. When they lose again, you bind them because they are spirit that won't die until the judgment comes upon them and they know they won't die. So you don't spend time praying, oh strong man, die, die, die. The, the moment you pray that prayer, this man already knows you don't know him. He knows you don't know him. When we see strong man, we just... You see me sometimes when I'm doing deliverance, I pick a sword, I slay. He's a strong man. What do you do? You cut off their hand. You cut, you separate them from that personality. And you see me sometimes when I'm doing deliverance, I begin to come out. What is in your stomach? Come out, come out. The person is vomiting. Why? I saw a plantation. As long as that plantation remains in the stomach, if you lie, pray from here to next year, there will be no change. Some people have been planted that poverty will, is your portion till you die. When I pray for such person, they need to bring out the seed of poverty that they ate either through the drink, through friends, wherever it was happened, they need to bring it. And until, sometimes you find out that people are bringing it out. You see them struggling. They want to bring it out. They are struggling. You think it's ordinary spirit? No. If the Lord open your eyes to see what is there, you will run away. You must command your freedom. Number six, how to overcome the caging spirit. Rededicate yourself to God. The moment you have command your freedom, make sure you don't forget to rededicate. Reconfess your salvation and proclaim your liberty and ask God to be your God and you will be his people. Rededication is a continuous process in our work with God because sometimes you don't know the people you meet and meet them that tempers with your destiny. You must continue to be spiritually conscious to rededicate yourself. Should be in case the Lord has turned his back to you. When you rededicate, he returned to you. Did you not hear? Some of you will say, how can God turn his back at me? Did you not hear what he said, Moses? He said, I have remembered my children need it. So did God forget before? Yes. He forgot them because there was no intercessor in them. <laughs> God can turn. He has many issues. That is why he has said to make us to have a way of walking with him. I have the cry of my people. They have stayed more than time God let people stay. Their case was never brought to God by anyone. Nobody reminded God. That is why in the time of Daniel, Daniel was in Babylon, but he prayed for the deliverance of his people. He never forgot because he took lessons from what happened in Egypt and interceded. So, child, you have now known this reality that the spirit man can be caged. The enemy can cage you. We are about to pray. We are about to pray. This prayer to move said that those who sleep in the church to write their name because I want to pray for still praying about God to give me a go ahead to deal with that issue. It is a very serious issue. Very serious. It is cage spirit that makes those people to sleep because these people, they have been so caged for so long. Their spirit is already used to being upset in them when the word of God is being preached, when the power of God is released. They go out of their body spirits. So they are not there, that's why they stay awake. They must be snoring or deep sleeping. Sometimes you see they are like they are anxious because the spirit, that spirit does, he knows if they are awake, the prayer will break through and set them free. So what he does, he hindered is we call it anti-prayer garment. Did you get the 
anti-prayer garment. They wear them that anti-prayer garment so that they can be in touch, but they will never be in touch. When you look at people, they have solved a long time problem, repeatedly events happening in their life. They have delay in prayer answer. They have delay in testimony. They have delay in getting things. People around them get blessed. Then they just wake up to see, oh, people are blessed. They are now confused like this. It is anti-prayer garment. As long as it is upon either by spare or by enchantment, you cannot receive any prejudge. So you can be a genuine Christian and you are under despair without way. And if your pastor does not know it, you are in doom. You see, there are some times you are preaching in the church and the preaching is very good and very sensitive is people sleep the most. What is happening? The agent of that next have realized that the preaching, like today now, you see, we are very few here. I can tell you it is this week that make many people not to come to church. Satan has seen the topic and have seen those people's life. What happened? They will say, I'm coming to church. Some of them are still saying, I'm going to church right now. They are still saying, I'm going to church. Let me get ready. Let me get ready. Um, 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 where is my handbag? I'm going, hey, it's almost time, but I will meet the mama close late. Let me get ready. This is how he plays it. He knows when you sit down to hear it, 20% of the cage power will be removed. He knows. Then when you go home and meditate on it, another 20% will be removed because the, the meditation of your heart is powerful. Then when you engage in the principles that has been stipulated for prayer, and not 20% will fall upon you. When we pray today, before we leave, another 20% will be removed. At that time, you are already at 80% or 9% freedom. Your continuous fellowshipping will make you to come out of that cage. And the next thing that will come is blessing. Testimony, faith, those who forgot you will remember you. Sickness will disappear. Struggle will end. And Satan is very angry. Hey, I'm telling you, I have been doing deliverance since the time God called me. God explained to something else. We have seen things. There are times this is deliverance. You know, in your country, people have, it. in my dream, we don't have, we have light, but we don't see light. When you start deliverance, there are times that there is a spirit you will summon. Your own generator will, will, be, will be on, but there will be no light. Generator on, everything functional, but your bulb don't have light. Put that same generator to your neighbor, then we have light. Put it where you are doing prayer, see light. Because the spirit that is manifesting has a problem with light. A beast does not need light, they need forest. So why are you giving him light? Are you understanding? So many a time, we Christians have missed and lose our touch. So I am praying for those people I have been named. I am only waiting for God to tell me this is the day. Because if you tell me this is the day, you will give me the angel to work for them. Me, I cannot work for anyone. God is not working for you. That's what I'm still with. I keep looking as I know these people will not be fully blessed. They will be equals instead of mega testimonies. Instead of outbreak, they will run like this and they will stop. They are small to be little. Are you ready to pray? and come out of that cage. Are you ready to pray and say, God,